So <clears throat> I want to talk about the properties of logs. Um, and in my other video, I talked about the basic properties of logs. Um, these are the main properties of logs. You have first what we call the product property of logs. That's not property. P-R-O-P, I'll just say. Um, and that deals with, so log of any base, A, of a product, right, X times Y, can be rewritten as a sum of separate logs. So this is the product property. A single log of a product can be rewritten as the sum of two separate logs, okay? And then you separate that product. I'm sure you've seen these before because you see them all over algebra. The quotient property is a log, any base of a quotient, right? Quotient is a fraction, division, um, can be separated into a difference, subtraction of the two separate logs. Um, and then the power property of logs is when I have a log of any base of anything to an exponent, and this exponent has to be on this whole expression, whatever it might be, I could rewrite this by taking this exponent to the front and converting it into a coefficient, okay? Now, of course, this is when this base is not the same as this. There's another property where the bases are the same and it simplifies into the exponent. This is where the bases aren't the same and I bring that to the front, okay? So um, I'm going to do two situations. First, I'm going to talk about, let's talk about, yeah, just expanding, what we call expanding logarithmic expressions. Um, you might also hear this, you know, asked or said as rewrite the single log. I'm just going to simplify. So rewrite, you're going from a single log, rewrite the single log into a sum or difference of uh, separate logs, okay? So if they ask you to rewrite the single log as a sum or difference of separate logs, you're also expanding the logarithmic expression or whatever it might be. Um, so I'm just going to do some quick examples. So log of, let's do, well, just 2x over y, okay? I want to rewrite this. So this is a single log, and what's the base? The base that's not written indicates that it's a base 10. It's a common log, right? If I see a log without a base written, it's automatically base 10. So let me rewrite this. So I see a quotient here first. So I'm going to take care of the quotient. So um, when I separate it, when I have a single log of a quotient, it's going to separate into a difference of two separate logs with the same base, right? Don't change the base. And then I, the numerator is going to be part of the first log and the denominator is going to be part of the second log. So now I started to expand this, right? I'm rewriting it as a sum and difference of separate logs. But I'm going to keep going because I notice here that I have a product, 2 times x. Well, that means I'm not completely expanded. So now this part can be expanded even further. Now a product, right, when it gets expanded, becomes a sum of separate logs. I'm not changing the base. And then um, the first part of the product goes with the first log, and the second part of the product goes with the second log. And then don't forget to bring down the rest of the expression. And I can't really do anything more with this because there's no exponent on this and there's no product or quotient. So now it looks like basic kind of situation. There's no exponents on them. There's no products left. There's no quotients left. So this is my ex uh, complete expanded case. So this single logarithmic function or single logarithmic expression rewritten as a sum or difference of separate logs is log 2 plus log x minus log y. And I can go back and forth between the two cases. Okay. Um, I'm going to do another one. Um, ln of x squared y to the third over z to the fourth. So <clears throat> This is the natural log, right? And the natural log has a base of E. So it has the same, remember, this is any log with any base. So it follows all of these properties the same. But it's a natural log. It's a special log. Well, I see, again, the quotient first, right? That's the big guy. So let's deal with the quotient. And when I have a quotient, 
of a single log, a single log of a quotient, it separates into division, uh, di uh, difference, subtraction of separate logs. The numerator goes first, and the denominator goes second. Now I'm not done, everything has exponents, but I also noticed that this has a product. So I'm not done, this has to be expanded even further. And a product, right, expands into a sum of separate logs. And then the first part of the product goes with the first log, and the second part of the product goes with the second log, and I'm gonna bring the rest of this down. Now I'm still not done, and the reason is because I have these exponents on these expressions, if this is an x to the second, this is a y to the third, a z to the fourth, right? So those exponents are on those full values, x, y, or z. So I can use the power property now, apply that um, exponent to the front, and make it a coefficient. So now this becomes, this exponent comes to the front as a coefficient, two times ln of x plus, bring that to the front, three times ln of y, bring that to the front, minus four times ln of z. No more exponents, no more products, no more, um, you know, after the logs, no more quotients, so therefore this is fully expanded, okay? Um, so these are nice, like, typical examples. Let me add something that, you know, kind of throws people for a loop. So something like this. Let's say I have log, it doesn't matter what base it is, we'll make it base two, of... Let me make it a different base so you don't confuse it with what I'm about to do. Log base 3 of the square root of x squared y over 9. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference between this and these. I still have the quotient. Obviously, I changed the base. I still have the quotient, but what is the main difference is the fact that there's a square root over that whole quotient. So I can't go right into this quotient property because this does not have anything over it. I have to simply get a quotient by itself before I can apply this property and separate. So I have to get rid of the square root. So, all right, I hope you guys remember this. I can rewrite a square root as an exponent. And that exponent is one half, right? So this is a rational exponent and this is called a radical sign. The index of the radical sign is two. Sometimes you'll see a number written here inside this little tick thing. So that's called the index. And the denominator of that fraction in, in the exponent is the same as the index of the radical. Okay, so that's how you go from back and forth. So if this was a fourth root, this would be one to fourth, you know. So the first thing that I want to do to get this quotient is bring this exponent, use the power property to get the exponent um, to the front. So I'm going to bring that one half to the front, log base 3 of x squared y over 9. Now if that one half didn't apply to this whole thing, then I wouldn't be allowed to bring it to the front. So remember the, product, the power property says that this exponent has to apply to the whole expression here, otherwise I can't use it, right? This has to apply to everything here, which it does. So I'm going to use that property and that works. So now, that's nice, now I have that basic quotient here. So now I'm going to use the same idea as I did here. I'm going to separate the quotient first. But don't forget that it's one half times this whole thing. This quotient is going to separate into a difference, right, of separate logs with the same base. And the numerator goes with the first one and the denominator goes with the second one. Okay, one half times this whole log. So one half times this whole thing. I'm not done. Again, I have a product here, so let me rewrite that. So as a, a log of a product gets separated into, keep my base the same, a sum of separate logs, and the first part of the product goes here, and the second part of the product goes there. Bring down the rest of that. Um, I'm not done. This two is still in the exponent and that two applies to the x so I could use the power property again. That two is gonna come to the front of that log here. So now it's two times log base three of x plus log base three of y minus, this is very interesting. Um, I'm thinking about this one. I think I can simplify it further because I can rewrite nine as a three squared, which means that these bases are the same which means that that logarithmic piece is gonna simplify more. 
using my other property um, in my other video that I spoke of there. So when I have the same base, it, they cancel each other out. That little piece is going to simplify just into a two. So now I have no more quotients or products. I have no more exponents or anything like that. The only other thing that I might do is distribute that two in, or that, I'm sorry, that one half. So one half times two is a one log base three of X plus one half times one, one half log base three of Y minus one half times two, which is one. And now I'm fully expanded. Um, so, you know, you want to be careful that you don't miss things like that. So, you know, you, within expansion, you have these other little pieces that pop up from the old properties as well. So if you can convert this to match the base of this, then you need to do that and use that old property and simplify that as well.